Hey everyone, it's springtime here in Quebec and it's time to start seeding in the fields, in the caterpillar tunnels, and I'm gonna be showing you what I've seeded in my greenhouse, check it out. Okay, so first things first, this is one of my favorite strategy to really warm up the soil in the spring. Uh, I put clear plastic in the winter, and so what happens here is that I have soil that is warming up, and it's not just warming up, it's also dry. So you see the soil is super warm already. Snow just melted. So that's really a smart way to start the season, warming up the soil when it's cold outside. Once it's warm, boom, I can seed it. <clears throat> and then I'll put a row cover. Having the raised beds really makes a big difference at this time of the year. That's a major aspect of spring planting. And then you have these caterpillar tunnels, they're gothic. So, you know, they shed the snow all winter long. And here, what I have is black plastic. And so I've destroyed everything that was there in the fall. And I also have warm soil that I'll be able to plant in. What I'll usually do is I'll direct seed outside and I'll transplant inside the caterpillar tunnels because you know, I'll have a layer, I'll put another layer with a row cover, and then that's going to be enough to keep young seedlings going. But for direct seeding, the seeds, they just get acclimated so much faster. So direct seeding peas, radishes, uh, different kind of uh, Huckerai turnips, different uh, mustard greens, they'll grow just as fine, caterpillar or not. The very first sprout that I'll be planting here will be probably lettuces um, and beets. So I transplant my beets because I have a really good head start and then I can have perfect density once they're in the ground. So lettuce, beets, uh, which I'm trying to seed every other week so that I have a constant supply, fresh beets, fresh lettuce heads for the restaurants here and for other restaurant uh, that I'm working with. The varieties of beets that I'm gonna be putting here uh, they're started in the nursery. Bolda is a really cool one. It's a new cultivar that I'm trying from France. Uh, otherwise, Chioga is a classic. I like it in the spring. And for the lettuce, I'm also going with Rouge d'Ivoire, which is a really, really, really dense, really uh, uh, red. And it's also one that can take some, some frost, some light frost. So that's, you know, we never know the temperature can change. So these are my favorite cultivars for here. So spring for me is like really exciting because the warm, the warm air comes out, but the soil also, and it's just like, okay, it's on baby, it's on, just get it going. And then the beauty of not having a tractor is that we can go in the fields even when it's wet. Because the beds are permanent, because the beds are raised, you know, a light machine or a wheel hoe, you know, can gently prepare the soils, I'll just broad fork. You know, I'm about six to seven weeks before all the other uh, growers that are mechanized. And that's an edge that I have as a market gardener because I'll be the first one at market with all these fresh veggies. And first at market is king, for sure. All right, so come on in. I'll show you a sneak peek of what's growing in my greenhouse. Again, you know, this, this project is to feed the kitchen and this was seeded I think the second week of January so this is our really really early crops so now what we have here these are some of my favorite spinach uh, tightly seeded this is Astro this is a it's a really good come and cut again uh, variety it's from Johnny's I think but you can get it from other people but Astro is really good in the winter. It grows really well and has a really lush, lush, really good green. So that's the reason why I'm growing this one. These are my all time favorite, you know, French breakfast, the original small radish. Uh, these are really fancy, really nice. Uh, I've always grown French breakfast and I 
and I think they're the best, especially really early in the spring. People get excited about them, they're nice. The trick with them is to make sure that you're all offsetting the seedlings so that you get successions and that you don't get a bumper harvest all at once. You want to make sure that you're planting every second week and then boom, you get succession planting that way. So French breakfast, really nice variety, like it a lot. Uh, if we move inward here, this is something that I haven't done in a while. Uh, this is a mix of just salads. This is Rouge d'Hiver. So this is a winter salad that can take really some frost and it did get some frost and it's still looking super good. I have a little bit of a weed issue. I haven't gone in yet, but that's gonna happen this week. But these salads are really nice. We seeded them with the six row seeders from Johnny's. It's gonna become really thick and I really need to get the weeds out of this bed for this week, that's for sure. So moving on, uh, this is tot soy. It's a really classic uh, Asian green. And I'm getting, because this is the first time I'm growing here, you can see that there's not great uniformity on the growth here. And that's giving me the signal that I need to work more my beds, level them better. They have, they're not perfectly level and you see what, what impact that it, that it has and perhaps a bit more compost because that's not to my liking but you know this it is this is and what's great about tot soy is that it gets really thick and really heavy and when you're selling things by weight <laughs> that goes a long way so tot soy really cool for that mustards uh, ruby streak another variety that i like what's great about ruby streak is that obviously it's purple and it's, it really looks good uh, in the salad mix. It's also great at whatever size. This is the one uh, come and cut again green that can really grow tall. I'll just cut the tops and I'll always have a nice size green. So that's, that's kind of my backbone um, uh, cultivar so that I can have, you know, even if it's overgrown, it's gonna be good enough for second, the third, fifth cut. So Ruby Streak, really like it. Then there's arugula, classic. Arugula is always a favorite. You can see it here. I'm not getting the perfect density that I'm used to. So that means I have some work to do with my bed spacing. You know, it's the first time planting here. So I'm discovering a lot of the, a lot of what was going on. The soil is actually telling me that there's some spots that aren't uh, optimal. You know, in another video, I might go over some of the solutions that I found for that. Carrots, good germination rates, five rows on 30 inch. Uh, it's pretty good spacing for early carrots. They have a lot of sun to really pop up. These are gonna be really early and they're really nice. Sorel was there transplanted last, uh, it was transplanted in November. So that's a, really a workhorse, really hardy. Took some beating, big frosts, still up. This is the last week that we have it. I'm gonna cut it off, cut it all out, and then we're gonna use it in the kitchen to do some vinegars. So that's, that's that. Then I have my sweet peas that are in the ground. They're coming up. And then the rest is a mix and match of more radishes, more uh, arugula, some salads so it's from there on it's just about having succession planting and having different strategies to make sure that i have a constant supply of the tw tw 10 to 15 veggies that i need to really pump out volumes so friends this is it for this week's video i hope you enjoyed it imagine that fast forward i'm in a different climate now i'm hanging out in italy for the week and i have my new buddy here check him out really cool guy and I'll have some amazing stories to share in the weeks to come. But till then, I'm giving a free workshop on successful seed starting. There's probably a few tricks for growers to learn. So if you're interested, check it out. All the information's on the link below. You can pass the information along. And till then, uh, I hope you are all well. I'm having a great time here in Italy. It's amazing. It's a short trip, but I'm learning a ton and I'll be excited to share a few things. So Arrivederci.